I think you need to list your priorities first um, and, and really think about that. And, and with your spouse, go mm-hmm. over those things together yeah. and say, I have a heart for this. God's given me a heart for this. I don't know how it's going to work out. Um, but here are the priorities. Here are the things that to me are the most important that I don't want to drop off the deep end. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back today with Sherry Seligson, and we've had such a good week. We've been talking about the power of words for our children, how we can lift them up or just break them down. I mean, how do we use our words and how do we build this relationship with our kids? But first I wanna thank our sponsor, CTC Math. I am grateful for CTC Math because as you know, I am not a big mathy person. I don't love math, but the people at CTC Math do love math. And so they've created this amazing curriculum for you and for me. Go to ctcmath.com. It's an online program that you can go to and try it out for free. See if it's a good fit for your family, ctcmath.com. But today I want to transition a little bit. And I want to talk with Sherry about how she got started um, homeschooling and, you know, just uh, her, her world of what it's been. Cause you started homeschooling how many years ago? About 20 something. Um, yes, yes. We homeschooled for 21 years. And 21 years. Okay. Yeah. And you said mm-hmm. all your kids are now grown. Yes. Yes. And we have, we have a, doing lots of different things. We have doctor, we have a cancer researcher, we have wow. a IT guy. Yeah. we got all kinds of stuff. So that's yeah. awesome. So how, how did you, I mean, this is one of those things that we homeschool moms need to hear. And I love hearing that. And not that all of our kids are going to become doctors or should become doctors or cancer researchers or musicians, because God has given each of our kids a specific, you know, ability and talent to serve his kingdom. That's what he's given to your kids. Um, But how how did you even get into this world of homeschooling and why? Well, you know, it's interesting. The story um, is it's, I look at where I am now and I, I think about the goals I had for my life back then. Um, I worked at Walt Disney World as a marine biologist. They have an island down in the Florida Keys. We would go diving and fishing and collecting animals and spent my days playing with, well, not always playing with dolphins, but lots of fun <laughs> things. I love the sharks. That was my thing. And and when we became pregnant, my husband and I really felt like it was, we wanted to be home. I wanted to be home with my with our children. And so my, my coworkers thought I was nuts. You know, why are you doing this? Why are you leaving? To do what? You're going to stay home and change Change diapers. diapers. (laughs) And I felt, I felt like, yeah, I am. I mean, but I really felt like God was calling me to do that. And then once our kids were old enough, we started homeschooling as if we weren't weird enough. We got weirder (laughs) and we started homeschooling. And again, I felt like God was calling me to do that. My husband and I both felt that way. But my plan A though, was working a little bit longer. We had gotten married. Um, My husband was actually going, still going to school, getting his degree uh, his master's and I was working and wanted to kind of work a couple more years to be able to get him through all everything. And yet we really knew we wanted children and God blessed us with a child before we had thought about it, which was great. So we weren't disappointed, but it was a surprise. And like, I was on this little track and then right. boom, God said no. And I considered a promotion. I say now I got promoted to motherhood, but it, it was not my plan a, not my initial plan a. And so, um, I, I realized that I had to change my thinking about this because I had what I thought were goals and God did something different. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the trajectory that I was on um, in learning what, what is it you have for me? What are my goals? What am, you know, am I just the diaper changer of the family or, or what? And so that's kind of the little background of how I got into this and how I had to deal with this for myself. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I, of course, you know, I've talked about this on the podcast lots and lots of times. I, I never planned to homeschool, but interestingly, I didn't, I didn't have a plan other than that. Like I didn't have a goal except that I knew I wanted to be a wife and a mom. Like that was my whole goal was to be a wife and a mom. Homeschooling was just not part of that puzzle for me. And so what, what was it about homeschooling that drew you to decide to homeschool your kids. Cause you said, of course, it, and I could see, you know, that your coworkers would be like, you want to do what? And maybe even your family. I mean, clearly you were well-educated and had a great career. I mean, how many people get to play with dolphins and sharks? I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> um, what was it that drew you to homeschooling your kids? We, we just met a couple of families who were homeschooling and we're just enamored with their children. We, we were, they were, we were impressed by their, how much they knew their eloquence, how, how easily they spoke with other adults, 
um, they were a joy to be around. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what we wanted for our children. So, you know, like many, I started thinking, saying to myself, well, I can't ruin preschool. Let's try right. that. You know, yeah. I know my colors and numbers. Um, but it just slowly every year we started doing more and more. And I, I fell in love with that. And I started to see the blessings of it as we were doing it, yeah. even beyond academics, way beyond academics. Yeah. I mean, really, academics were secondary when I look back at the value of this this lifestyle, but I still didn't feel like I was, you know, what was my purpose in this? Yeah. And, um, it is just interesting to see with perspective now what God was doing. Um, first of all, it was not for the rest of my life, right? I, I, I was leaving the career mode into mom homeschooler mode thinking it was a sideline, but I realized when I looked back, it was really God's plan A. It wasn't yeah. my plan A, but it was God. God doesn't have a plan B right. for us. He Everything has a plan. It's a plan. Right. I know the plans I have for you, right? Right. His plan is plan A. We have to discover what that is as he impresses on us and puts things in our lives. So it was still God's plan A. And I'm like, what are you doing with my life? I remember um, thinking we had um, two children. That, uh, my kids came at two years apart. So our first two, I had a, um, a two-year-old, a newborn. And I was like, all I was doing was changing bodily right. fluids coming out of kids. I mean, that was and putting stuff in their bodies, you know, right. feeding them. And, and, and I was like, is this my life? This is, is this it for the rest of my life? And you know what? <laughs> that was a blink compared yeah. to what I've done since then, right? We, we know it feels like those days will last forever. But that perspective, I realized this is not the rest of my life. I'm not being put off or sidelined. So Lord, since this is a continuation of your path, mm -hmm. what are you going, what are you doing in me? Um, through this experience. And I, I want to encourage all the moms out there, particularly, God is doing something extraordinary in you through this. You may feel like you're just, you're just a this or just a that, and you're not good at this and you're not good at that. And some days you really, you know, you love your children, but do you really like them sometimes? Right. I don't know, right? And so it can be frustrating and hard, but God is doing something extraordinary in you through this process. We always say, you know, you're raising um children to, to change the world, but God's doing something in you to change the world too. Yeah. And, and that's some, that's my encouragement to moms. So there's things that we can do and things that I, when I, again, I have this perspective now that I see what God was doing in my life to prepare me for what he had for the different chapters and seasons. As my kids got older, as my kids were leaving the home, um, I had a very, very bad uh, experience getting grammar education. I, I, I went to four different middle schools because my family moved a lot during that time. Okay. And, and that's the season when you're learning how, I've never diagrammed a sentence. I had right. never done. I never have either. And I never oh. will. Okay. Well, yeah. And my girls never have either. No, our kids not, have never either. <laughs> not that sentence diagramming is bad, cool. but, <laughs> but I just, I it's had not a very, for everyone. I had a very bad grammar education and guess what? I had to teach my children grammar four times through each child going yeah. through that whole I learned writing and grammar in a way I had never learned before. Right. And it, I had, I just, cause I had to learn, I learned it with them. And so yes. I, and my, I, my time on my knees improved, my prayer life improved. Right. And so my connection with my Lord and, and my relationship with God grew because of the feeling of helplessness some days and the feeling of, I don't have enough. Um, and so, and then my organization skills improved my skill set. I, I taught science classes as my kids got older and, and learned how that process went. Guess what I'm doing now? I'm writing curriculum. I'm teaching students. I'm speaking to, I'm, I'm doing things. When I worked at Disney, I spoke to lots and lots, hundreds of people all the time because it was just part of the, of the process. I don't have a problem speaking to people. So God took all of those things he did in that path mm -hmm. that was his plan A right. to build in me skills, character, huh, humility, all of those things that I need in order to continue to do the things he has for me on his plan A for me. Right. And I look back and I'm just dumbfounded. I could never have orchestrated that. Right. And, and so, and you know, it, it doesn't matter what it is we're doing that got for each season and there is no lesser season and there is no lesser occupation. Yeah. One versus the other. If you're in God, if you're doing what God has for you to do, it's the best thing. And he prepared you for it through the process of his plan A. 
Yeah. And I think as moms, we get frustrated. We have these hopes and desires and dreams, and but I always wanted to do this, or I went to college for that. I'm not doing that now. Okay. There's things that you can do um, to work on those, on those dreams to see how God unfolds yeah. those for you. Yeah. Such good stuff. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the, the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts, and we say, this is what you do, step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Sherry. Um, you know, it's interesting to hear you talk now because if if 20 years ago you had looked ahead 20 years and said, you know, what is the Lord going to do with me 20 years from now? You, like you said, you couldn't have planned it out the way the Lord did. And when you were in the midst of it, when you were in the middle of your homeschooling and raising kids, you probably didn't even realize what the Lord was doing with you at the time, but it was when you came out of that season of your life. Now you can look back and say, oh, wow, that's why God did this, 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 and this, and has allowed me to use these things in my life for me to become who I am today and how I'm serving him today. And yeah. so I, I love hearing from the perspective of a mom like you, who's just a little bit further along than I am. And how you can look back and see how the Lord has used these things in your life. Yeah. When you're in the middle of it, it's hard to see out. Yeah. It's hard to see to step out of outside of that timeline of your life to see where the connections are. And frankly, when we're in those homeschooling years, it's, it's intense. It's constant. It's, there's always something to raising our children is, is a full-time job. And many moms have other things they're doing on top of that. And so we can be very overwhelmed. We can't see the progress. Um, we can feel despondent. We can feel despair. Um, and so I really want to encourage um, those who are listening that um, God is not, is not un, um, detached from you. God is yeah. there and he has a plan and he has a purpose for you. He made each of us for a specific purpose. And yeah. right now, if you're homeschooling your children right now, that's your purpose. But there's things you can do in thinking and preparation to start exploring what he has for you, because there's going to be a transition as your children get older. There's going to be time that change. Your kids will have to be more independent. That's our goal, right? right? Independent learners so that they need you less and less. Again, that's our goal. And so you will have more time. So there's things you can do to start preparing for that. Okay. So tell, tell me what you, cause <laughs> were you able to set some like short-term goals or did you have long-term goals? How did you do that? No, I didn't. I did nothing. Okay. <laughs> but, but with perspective, I can tell you what to do because yes, okay, I, do that. I yes. Done because I, I basically stumbled through all of this wrestling with, you know, is this my sideline? People kept saying, well, when are you going to get back to doing marine biology and, and how long are you going to sideline your career? It's not a sideline. Yeah. Right. And so if you have a, a heart, a desire to do something, um, I would recommend you start doing some short-term goals and planning. Take some time to Think about what your thoughts are, what your, write them down, right? Write what skills you think you have, what skills you want to improve on, what abilities you have, where your heart is and how those things fit with what your hope, your hopes are, mm -hmm. uh, your goals are, it, where are your skills that meet that and what skills do you need to get? And then see where those opportunities are to build those skills. You may have some free time where you can take an online class or you can do something. You may not, and that's okay at yeah. this point. But start there with the goal and then start working backwards to, to give yourself a vision, to be prayerful about it, ask the Lord to show you things to do, and then get involved with your kids. Because guess what? He's going to build skills in you and prepare you for the next chapter by doing what he has for you now. Yeah. So if he has for you now to be a homeschool mom, get involved with what they're doing. If they're playing soccer, go to the games You know, and volunteer to bring the snacks. If they're on debate team, Go with the debate team as best as you can or drive the kids together. Be involved, you know, practice there, help them practice their prep, you know, what they're doing, their, their debate stuff and um, get to know what they're doing and love what they're doing and learn along with them mm -hmm. because you are building in you things, 
I don't know what they are yet, and you're going to learn as you go, um, that God knows he will use. I, I see, I see it. I saw him do it in my children's case as well. Four different kids, four different ages, different directions, and the opportunities that popped up for them throughout our homeschooling years were very different. We, you know, you have a great, let's say you've got a great composition teacher, writing teacher that your kids are co-oping class there, and she's leaving, she's retiring. No, I've got one more child left. You've got to teach this child because you taught my others. What am I going to do? It's okay because that child needs something different, some other teacher, some other format. God knows. And I see it with each of my children. I can tell you story after story about what he did with each one. Again, with the perspective I have now, Right. Um, what he did, oh, you made that class available for this one or that teacher or the crazy year that we had where we weren't doing a lot of school because my father was sick and lived with us and all I was doing was going to doctor's appointments. The independence child, the child who needed independence had to get independence and did. Yeah. And so that's what he's doing with you too. So get involved with your kids. Um, what you might be doing with them might be something that's going to build skills in you that he has for you for the future, for the next goal that he has. And pray for opportunities. Keep an eye out for them. You may not have funds to take an online class. So be prayerful about maybe people in your church who do something that you love, that you can connect with, or meet for coffee once a month with somebody who can help pour into you about something that you're, you have a dream about mm -hmm. and can come alongside. Um, there's, there's ways to be creative, to find that time to, to do the things that you are want to do. When, my, when I started writing my first book, um, I would do my research in the evenings after the kids went to sleep. And then once a month, my kids called it mommy peace day because <laughs> Dave, my husband used to say, we're going to give mommy her peace time. And we're going to go. <laughs> and he would take them once a month for the whole day take them on a Saturday and they'd go do all kinds of fun things. And that was the day that I wrote. That's, I took all my research and I compiled and I could think and, I, and the temptation to do the laundry was there, the yeah. temptation, but that was what we did. But my kids were old enough mm -hmm. for us to do that. And they, they were in a season where they didn't have to go a million different places. They didn't have jobs yet. It was, it was a season and that we, we said for a year, we can do this. And so we did that. Um, so look for ways to be creative about finding time, yeah. to incorporate things that you want to do or to build the skills that you are interested in building to see if that's a good fit for what God has for you, where your family is at that time. Yeah. Yeah. How do you maintain your priorities in doing that? Because it's, I, I, I mean, man, there, we've talked a lot about this on the podcast. You know, we just did an episode not that long ago about, you know, wearing all of our hats without wearing out um, with Val Harrison. And, and it just seems like there's so many things for us to, to do and to get done. And so like, as I think about that, I'm like, oh no, adding one more thing. Now I have to add another thing to do, um, which of course is not, not necessary. Um, but how did you maintain your priorities in the process of, you know, figuring out, you know, and, and, and even though you didn't think about it at the time, but you talking to us moms, like, how can we prepare for what the Lord has for us in the future and keep our priorities straight? I think you need to list your priorities first. Um, and, and really think about that and, and with your spouse, go over mm -hmm. those things together yeah. and say, I have a heart for this. God's given me a heart for this. I don't know how it's going to work out. Um, but here are the priorities. Here are the things that to me are the most important that I don't want to drop off the deep end yeah. time with my children, their education. I wanted, I, I wanted to make sure our house was in order as, I mean, in order as best you can when you've got kids at home, <laughs> right? <laughs> with a grain of salt, you know, that they had clothing to wear that was somewhat yes. clean. Um, that I was <laughs> teaching them how to do that, how to take care of the clothing for themselves, um, that there was gro their groceries were bought, that there were certain things that to me were non-optional. You know, I'm not going to drop the ball on these. And if I right. found that some of those things started happening, even when I started speaking uh, at conventions, those would take me away from home three or four days a week mm -hmm. out of the week. And that was a way. So I would make sure I'd make a bunch of meals ahead of time and freeze them so the family had food but I wouldn't do a lot of them in a row because I felt like being away, even though it was great stuff and I was ministering right. um, to others, my prime ministry was to my family. And so when it interfered with those mm -hmm. priorities, that's where you need to be considering, am I doing this right now? Is this the right season for me? Should I postpone it? You know, how can we, if, or not, how do I work it in and not, you know, something will have to drop. Like you said, Right. If you add something new and you're already overwhelmed, something else has to go away. Right. And it can't right. be those priorities. So yeah. 
I would, I would say, you know, and continually talk to your spouse about it. You know, moms, talk to your husbands, um, ask them to pray with you. And it's just, it's such an, it infects them too. Yes. And talk to your children about it. Let them know if you're doing a ministry thing, or if you have these goals, it's okay. You want them to know you have aspirations and goals too, Yeah. but tell them you are my priority right now. Yeah. And so I want to pursue this. Um, I may start now and in the future, but you guys are my priority and I want to spend time with you and I want you guys to thrive so that we together can grow right. the way God wants us to grow and Amen. consider it a ministry. It's, yeah. it's, you know, what you're doing is a ministry to your children. Mm -hmm. What God has for you in the future is a ministry that he has for others. Even if it's just in a career that's not Christian related, we're always in ministry. Yes. And so what is it that you have? My, my, my most important thing, it, it's, it's priorities are, are key and, and considering ministry as the work that you're doing on top of those priorities. Yeah. Yeah. All right. One last question, because we have just a couple minutes left. Um, how would you encourage the mom who feels like she's just, she's missing out on something. She's missing out on her career that she's worked so hard for, you know, and I've known plenty of people like yourself who, you know, they've, they're, they are doctors, they are lawyers, they are engineers. Um, you know, they've worked really hard to, you know, they, they've been teachers, they've worked hard to become successful in the career path that they feel like the Lord has chosen for them. And they've, put that to the side in order to be home with their kids and raise their families and homeschool their kids. But I still think a lot of moms feel like they're somehow missing out on something like, you know, they're just like, yeah, this is great. And I love it. But they just feel like they're being pulled a little bit more towards, you know, what their other passion is. How can you encourage that mom? I think that it is important for us to, again, remember that, um, there's no just, and there's no wasted information, education, or and energies. If you had a career as a lawyer before, and you stopped doing that because you want to be home with your children, um, or you're working part time, or whatever it is, you're not sidelined. You're not. You're not missing the boat. You're not. Um, and and I, I can say that confidently because if you're being called to homeschool, then God has that for you now, and not insert career right now. Right. Um, so he's going to use those skills in some other way. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's your logic skills and your thinking skills. Maybe it's your organization ability. Maybe it's your communication skills in some other way. And it may not be career. It may not be in a career. It yeah. may be, but it may not be. Um, it, it may be something else because we're not just a homeschool mom. We're not right. just, we're, and because our children, you know, Lord willing, we, we, we educate them, we train them, we raise them and they launch. Mm -hmm. And there will be a season, Lord willing, that you are on the other side of that. And that's a big chunk of your life. It's not all of your life, yeah. but it's part of it. So, so when you're feeling like you're, you're, you've like, I've, I struggled with that. I had this degree. I had, I had published research on shark behavior. I was like, career was moving up and it was so fun and I loved it. And then I left to stay home and I almost felt like my, my parents and I wonder what they thought about me. Was yeah. I squandering my education? Was I squandering my abilities? Was I, um, and they never said it outright. They were so gracious, but I saw them because they even thought we were weird when we homeschooled. Right. <laughs> but they started catching the vision when they saw some of the results of what we were doing. Yeah. When, and, they, and they became our greatest cheerleaders for homeschooling as they began to see our children develop. And so I, I was confident that they didn't feel like that, but I felt like that still. And then I started seeing, okay, Lord, what do you have for me? Today you have this for me. I don't know what you have tomorrow. Yep. I'm going to pray about it tomorrow. I don't know what you have next month. And so keep an eye out for opportunities. Ask God to show you. Um, talk to people in your church who are a season ahead of you that are wise, that you admire, and, and share those. Share your heart. Share your heart with some other moms you can walk along alongside with. You may have a desire to, I don't know, start some great business. And it may not be the time right now. So you're yeah. starting to gather the experience, the exposure, the information now until it's time for you to launch that when your yeah. children launch. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense? It does. It mm -hmm. does. Well, thank you so much for that encouragement. And just for your encouragement this week, it's been fun talking about the power of words um, and just, you know, setting mom goals. These are all important things that every homeschool mom deals with in one way or another. So I really do appreciate your time 
this week. And um, thank you for being with me. We will put all things Sherry Selix and all the links that you need to find out more about her in the show notes. Um, thank you for your ministry and your encouragement to me. My pleasure. To our listeners. Um, you guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have been encouraged this week as I have been. I will be back on Monday with another fantastic guest. Until then, have a great rest of your day and we'll see you back then. Bye. Often when I speak and I talk about the need to equip ourselves with a biblical worldview, and, I, and I'll mention to my audience that we got to recognize that around 90% of kids from church homes go to the public schools. And in those public schools, in a real sense, secularism, naturalism, atheism is the new religion of that system. The system itself is inherently atheistic because the system itself assumes right up front, that you don't need God to explain anything, that you can explain all things, biology, anthropology, astronomy, mathematics, uh, everything without God, without the Bible. That is the religion of humanism, naturalism, atheism. And for so many Christian parents, when we send our kids to that system, they're there for almost 40 hours a week, nine months out of the year, uh, and they're getting really hit with this atheistic worldview and all the reasons really the atheistic worldview must be true, and if that's true, then the Bible can't be true.